Section 21 of American Big Game Hunting, a collection of stories by the Boone and Crockett Club, edited by Theodore Roosevelt and George Bird Grinnell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. American Big Game Hunting, Section 21, the exhibit at the World's Fair. At its last annual meeting, the club determined to have an exhibit at Chicago. It was felt that it would be a pity if at the World's Fair there was no representation of so typical and peculiar a phase of American national development as life on the frontier. Accordingly, it was determined to erect a regular frontier hunter's cabin and to fit it out exactly as such cabins are now fitted out in the wilder portions of the Great Plains and among the Rockies, wherever the old-time hunters still exist, or wherever their immediate successors, the ranchmen and pioneer settlers, have taken their places. The managers of the World's Fair very kindly gave the club for its exhibit the wooded island in the middle lagoon. Here the club erected a long, low cabin of unhewn logs, in other words, a log house of the kind in which the first hunters and frontier settlers dwelt on the frontier. Whether this frontier was in the backwoods of the east in the days when Daniel Boone wandered and hunted in Kentucky, or later when Davy Crockett ranked not only as the best rifle shot in all Tennessee, but also as a weak congressman of note, or whether, as in the times of Kit Carson, the frontier had been pushed westward to the Great Plains, while new settlements were springing up on the Pacific coast and among the Rockies. The inside fittings of the cabin were just such as those with which we are all familiar in the ranch houses and cabins of the wilderness and of the cattle country. There was a rough table and settles with bunks in one corner and a big open stone fireplace. Pegs and deer antlers were driven into the wall to support chaps, buckskin shirts, broad hats, stock saddles, and the like. Rifles stood in the corners or were supported by pegs above the fireplace. Nothing was to be seen save what would be found in such a cabin in the wilds. And, as a matter of fact, the various rifles, stock saddles, and indeed the chaps and buckskin shirts, too, had all seen active service. Elk and bear hides were scattered over the floor or tacked to the walls. The bleached skull and antlers of an elk were nailed over the door outside. The head of a buffalo hung from the mid-partition, fronting the entrance, inside, and the horns of other game, such as mountain sheep and deer, were scattered about. Without the door stood a white-capped prairie schooner, a veteran of long service in cow camps and on hunting expeditions. The exhibit was put in charge of Elwood Hofer of the Yellowstone National Park. On June 15th, it was formally opened with a club dinner at which a number of the gentlemen connected with the World's Fair were present as guests. Big game hunters visiting the fair must have been especially struck with the colossal figures of moose, elk, bison, bear, and cougar which guard the various bridges. Some are by Proctor and some by Chemis. Well worthy of notice likewise were the groups of mounted big game in the government building and those put up by Mr. L. L. Dyke in the Kansas State Building. End of section 21.